whenever we hear the word equivalence, we are naturally inclined to, to think of what is in reality the outbound equivalence. That is the one that would allow, for instance, UK investment firms to be able to offer their services to certain categories of investors in Europe. There is another type of equivalence which I wanted to uh, talk briefly about today, which is what we can define as inbound equivalence. That is the equivalence that uh, would allow, for instance, usage to be offered to the retail market in the UK. What is the genesis of this uh, inbound uh, equivalence? As part of the works for uh, the withdrawal from the European Union and the onshoring into UK law of certain pieces of EU, EU law, the uh, UK authorities did realize that um, in Europe there were some equivalence pronunciation or decisions for certain third countries. And for them to be able to complete the work related to the onshoring, they had to replicate this um, equivalence uh, decisions also into UK law. And this is how uh, they decided uh, to introduce their own equivalence and the role that in Europe the European Commission has in granting the equivalence would then be uh, assigned to the HM uh, Treasury with the financial service regulators in the UK like the FCA, the BRA, the Bank of England uh, performing the, the role of technical support and advice that was and still is in Europe assigned to the European Supervisory Authority. Is this relevant to you if you uh, plan to market your funds in the UK, your European funds to retail investors in the UK in the future? I indeed, it is relevant because this mechanism of inbound equivalence has been set already within the uh, UK overseas fund regime, which is in place already, but for the lack of equivalence decisions is not yet in, uh, in function. And so on the uh, inbound equivalence, this is uh, a fully UK-centric type of process. And that is because the HM Treasury would typically initiate a dialogue with a specific jurisdiction in order to um, start the works uh, for uh, an equivalence determination. Um, is it possible for a certain jurisdiction to propose themselves to be assessed as equivalent? It is indeed possible, of course, uh, there is a separate process to evaluate the priority and the importance of this type of uh, assessments when these are not initiated by the HM Treasury itself. The HM Treasury, of course, um, works on the basis of what uh, certain stakeholders or representative groups um, present to it as uh, uh, jurisdictions where they have an interest, right? So there has to be an interest of a UK group to obtain equivalence or to um, assess as equivalent a, a specific country. Um, once there is an assessment, uh, the dialogue has been completed, there are evidences that the, the third country and its jurisdictions are equivalent, then basically uh, there is uh, a secondary uh, legislation type of, uh, of process that kicks in where a statutory instrument would then set the equivalence of a specific uh, jurisdiction. So there is a, a separate process. Uh, how relevant is this to you if you want to market your usage in, in the UK to the retail market going forward? Very relevant. And this is for uh, a series of reasons uh, because today there are avenues for third country funds that want to offer their interest to retail investors in the UK, but those in our view are more on paper and in principle than in practice. And there will always be stumbling blocks 
for uh, full pronunciation of equivalent protection of, of these funds, whilst in our view, once there is a, uh, an equivalence type of assessment vis-a-vis -vis the European Union or, as some say, vis-a-vis uh, -vis certain individual jurisdiction, then we will look at the, the outcomes of the regulation rather than the, the means and the actual rules, and equivalence would, in a way, make uh, the the offering of these funds a reality and not a fantasy anymore. There's more to come on cross-border distribution, Brexit and European regulation. As always, thank you for watching and stay tuned.